Hello to my non-binary viewers, and exclusively them. Today I'm examining a giant purple personality that's been a long time coming both on this channel and the broader Transformers Generations world. So get your cannons out for Kingdom Galvatron. This is bad comedy. Now, I understand that a lot of people are having a hard time finding this figure in stores. Well, no need to worry, because I'm here to help. Just take the closest Megatron figure in the vicinity, and then... <laughs> Ta-da! So, just to establish the basics, Galvatron is the reincarnated form of Megatron and the leader of the Decepticons. So being a character with a profile as high as this, you'd think he'd have a high toy priority from Hasbro, right? WRONG! You see, prior to this, the only real options for modern Galvatron representations came in the form of the quite lackluster Titans Return figure, as well as that deluxe class universe Galvatron figure which they kept re-releasing over the course of nine years. And I can only describe that figure using the two T's. Tiny and terrible. So yeah, just like fellow 1986 faction leader Nemesis Rodimus, Galvatron was just kind of tossed aside with only a very shoddy toy roster to show for it. So I realize that with Kingdom Galvatron, saying it's good is basically the same as saying it's the greatest classics version of this character ever. And while I do maintain that it is that, I'll go as far as to say this is just a great figure in its own right. Comparing it to the original G1 model, it looks like such a spot-on representation. It just looks so... ACCURATE. Maybe it's the thrill of the fact that it took 30 years to finally get a toy of Galvatron that actually looks like the animation model, but just seeing this huge purple maniac on the shelf is such a joy. I can't praise enough how good everything looks. It's just so well sculpted from the legs, to the chest, to the arms, to the crest. This head sculpt is just mm -mm, too beautiful from the dynamic angles to the polygonal cheeks to the stunning silver face. And he's rocking this big ol' crown thing that really puts the king in kingdom. This makes me so happy, especially because before this, the only reasonably sized Galvatron figure on the market was the Titans Return one, whose entire helmet crown detailing came up on this springy paper-thin flap. There were like 900 upgrade kits made for that figure's head alone, so I'm just grateful that we finally have a Galvatron that features an entire head. You see what I mean when I said all this figure needed to be was good? And can we give them a round of applause for finally nailing the shoulder sticky yuppie things? I don't know if these things have ever served a purpose, like even in the alt mode, but they're just so Galvatron and he wouldn't have looked right without them. Imagine how cumbersome these things probably are. Every time you want to look at other side, it's just blocked. Quite interestingly, this figure's repping the battle damage paint apps. You know, the ones that were a huge deal when Siege kicked off and then just didn't come back. I know some people are probably going to complain about this, but I actually think they look pretty cool. Like, it's subtle and it doesn't intrude on the overall figure's aura, but they're just present enough for you to know the war-worn weariness of this warrior. The only area it looks kind of half-hearted is in the legs. It actually took me a few days to even notice he has battle damage paint there, but again, I can definitely deal with it. It's neat how these pieces of the cannon mode actually blend into being the side skirt things. There's a bit of tread kibble behind his arms, but that is accurate to how the source material looks, which means it's fine. It's true, it's in the constitution. I suppose I could talk about the widespread factory misassembly of this figure's shoulders, though. There's apparently been a lot of copies of this figure that came with the shoulder pieces applied on the wrong side of the arm joints, making them a few millimeters lower than they should be. Mine seems to have this issue, but it actually doesn't bother me that much. Again, it's only a difference of a few millimeters. Maybe one day I'll try to fix it, but I think this is a testament to how good this figure is. It came misassembled right out the box, and it's still one of the best figures of the year. Plus, it doesn't interfere at all with this gorgeous articulation. This Galvi guy can move around and pose up a storm and look so good doing it. Standouts for me are the double-jointed elbows, as well as the ankle tilt that helps with the posing. Be careful when tilting the ankles, though. Go too far and- OH MY GOD- Alright, now it's time to talk about the grand glorious Galvatron fusion cannon. I always thought this was such a cool design and a very interesting way of adapting Megatron's Walther P-38 scope cannon into the far-off spacey future setting of the late G1 world. And it's huge and imposing with all the subtlety of Randy Newman. It just takes me away. It is the perfect plastic version of this thing they could have possibly made. It can attach to the sides of his arms like so, but because the weapon ports are cross-compatible, you can potentially use anything here, 
Ooh. Taking a peek at the accessories, Galvatron comes with this chained matrix of leadership, a really rad reference to the 86 movie. It can detach, but he can't hold it, which is fine, because why would you want to do that? He also includes these two blaster things here, which look suspiciously like the ship Unicron gave him. And this shall be your ship. They're fine, I guess, but I don't think he really needs them, and they are kinda unnecessary. Maybe it's supposed to scale with the tiny Galvatron that the HasLab Unicron comes with, but I ain't got one! Who do I look like, Rockefeller? But moving on, this is an absolutely gorgeous Galvatron robot mode. I'm not really sure how to put it into words just how much I love this thing. Like, you can see it too, right? You're feeling the secondhand awesomeness, I know it. It's just a brilliant, beautiful bad guy with buckets of boldness. Now let's fire away! Get it, cause he's a cannon. The transformation is so good! I just love it, everything works well and behaves properly, but I'm so impressed with how many components fold out and move around in very unexpected ways, and I'm so happy they didn't try to overcomplicate this figure to the point of frustration. It just does what it needs to and acts as a great fun toy to get your fiddly mitts on. And here's Galvatron in his future space cannon mode. I don't think it's a bold take to say that this is a weird idea. Like most of the Transformers with unusual alt modes during this time had their toys created before or their cartoon designs, so what else were they supposed to do? But the 86 movie guys had their toys designed after their cartoon appearances, so they clearly wanted Galvatron to turn into this instrument of mass abstraction. Robots in disguise. For what it's worth, it is more reasonable than Megatron's gun mode. But you know what? None of that matters. It's cool and it's fun, and that's why it's awesome. This is why we go along with this logic, and because Galvatron is this huge, upgraded, reborn version of Megatron, this is actually a fairly sensible step to take with the alt mode, going from a gun to a straight up cannon. Judging the alien nature of the source material, I think this works out very nicely. It's absolutely what I want from Galvatron. It definitely succeeds at capturing the feel of both the character as well as the time where this character occupied the series. Adore the cylindrical industrial weapon holdy thing looking like the Imperial logo. Anyone else think it's a little weird that G1ers always complain about Hot Rod getting Optimus Prime killed even though he didn't, but they never complain about Galvatron, you know, actually killing Starscream? Selective outrage much, G1ers? <laughs> you can apparently attach the weapons on the sides here. Ooh, I'm good. Also, you can tab the Matrix onto here, which is less dumb, and I think this was a thing that actually was in the movie at one point. But back to the main feature, in short, I love this guy. This is probably the best version of this thing they could have possibly made. This is exactly what I wanted from a leader class Galvatron. And it feels so great to finally complete the 86 Decepticon trio. All three of these figures are fantastic, and it's great that they can finally chill with their leader now. In summary then, it's amazing, and one of the best figures of the War for Cybertron trilogy so far. It's so great that they're apparently releasing a Generation Selects version of him in his 80s toy colors, which maybe I'll get? I don't know. I think the sticker details look a bit excessive and... Oh, wait a minute. The stickers come on a sheet? Alright then.